up, guys? Uh, we're the team uh, developing Amen. Uh, a quick summary about uh, why we created this app. We wanted to help the community of Richmond be able to go outside and enjoy more events and be able to connect with more people. And uh, we found that the problem in Richmond is that uh, a lot of people, especially the younger generation, are not going outside more. They're staying inside, they're not interacting with others. And we wanted to help fix this problem. We also wanted to solve the problem of uh, people being bored. And as you can just not have an interest right now, and you can be looking for new ones. So how we solve this problem is that our app actively recommends you new interests, new events, and uh, new ways to connect with people. We cater to what you like, showing you relevant events that are, that are um, uh, something that might pique your interest. We also notify you of interest. We have a notification system to be able to help you out uh, with remembering all the different events that you signed up for. So our competitive advantage is that we're more focused on events. Um, we have com com uh, competitors like Facebook with an event system, but ours is more focused um, helping out smaller events that don't have the uh, following on Facebook as they need to get uh, to go. So that's what our app is for. We're also focused on younger people as this is the demographic that is starting to become more depressed and more isolated from society. This is a demo. Please keep in mind this is a prototype. Hey guys. Um, so, anyways, I'll be handling any technical questions later. All right. I'm just going to skip through our login right now, because that's not really necessary to go through. Um, this was a very ambitious project, to say the least, and we really didn't get most of our um, how can I say this? Um, features done, then the core features, yes we have. So I'll go, I'll go through the events one first. Um, sorry about the placeholders, I couldn't get the assets. But okay, so this is our event system. It dynamically displays a bunch of events that are relevant to whatever button that you press there. Now, let's, let's go over to an example. Um, Civ 5 game, Nuke Isaac again. This looks interesting, I'll join. Hey, I'm going. All right, now, I'm gonna, now it's gonna notify me about that event actively. And I can also join the chat for that, the associate chat for that event, which has all the people who are going there who decided to join the chat. Now, I mentioned chat. That's also another feature that we managed to get done. Yeah, this chat. Okay, it's empty though. Well, it's not gonna be for super, very quickly, I guess. But anyways, yes, those are the core features that we managed to get done. Um, we also sort of finished um, um, individual discussion threads. But I haven't populated that with data yet, sorry. Okay, that would be your demo. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, now we have questions for three minutes. All right, guys, any questions? Yes. Um, those are dummy values, but then I actually set it up to receive the server data in a way like that. Yes. But I don't have a server, unfortunately. Like which parts do you have you have a server or no? 
I don't have a server. I'm just using dummy data, but then it's set up in a way that's ready to accept server data. Questions? We've got three minutes, guys. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you manually put in the events or is it automated? Where um, are you taking the events from? This time I manually place the events in because I don't have a server, but normally it would accept those event data from the server. It's dummy data. Yes? What kind of research do you do when you What kind of research? Um, what do you mean by that? Yes, I spoke to a couple people. <laughs> and also Google statistics, they were very helpful. Yes? Uh, this would be through a server, correct? Yes. Um, who would edit the, the data going to the server? Is anyone able to put it in? No, it's, it's based on user input. Of course there would be moderation. Alright, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you mentioned that Facebook is your main competitor? Not our main competitor, but I mean Facebook is a giant. It's anyone any social media like networking sites main competitors. So, so what's the main differentiator between what you actually like? Visually it looks rather similar, don't you agree? <laughs> like the event system. And it works in a similar manner. But our focus is the is a major differentiator. Facebook doesn't really like it, it's one of Facebook's features, but it doesn't put any particular emphasis on it. We do. All right. Thank you, guys. getting their certificates and photos taken. Uh, the next team on deck is uh, Fresh Recipes. So Fresh Recipes, please uh, start coming up. And then the team after that is Teaming with Success. Okay? So Teaming with Success, uh, get ready here right after this. Let's, uh, let's ha have uh, everyone's attention. Uh, someone turn on the lights, maybe turn it back on, please. Um, so just some house rules. Uh, I guess I should have been more explicit. The question period is only for the judges. Okay. So, so only the judges get to ask questions. about to start. Let's have everyone's attention.
Um, we got the inspiration for, for our app by looking at problems that we could solve. One of Canada's biggest problems are rising obesity rates. A, a healthier lifestyle starts with a better diet. When people cook with their own ingredients, they know what's going into their food and how much. Um, the second problem is how university students often skip their meals. Our app, uh, our app helps students save money and time because you don't have to buy a list of new ingredients every time you have to make a recipe. This also minimizes food waste. In Canada, $31 billion uh, dollars worth of food ends up in, landfill, in landfills, and 47% of that food waste occurs in our homes. Next slide. So the objective of our app is to help students lead healthier lives without having to spend too much time and their money on food. So what's the target market for our app? The target market for our app are millennials because they're one of the largest customer bases for online recipes. Our findings show that millennials are often too busy to cook and they prefer to use electronic devices while cooking. Since our product offers, since our product offers recipes in an in a intuitive manner, we believe that our application is well suited towards millennials. Okay, 31% um, of millennials say that choosing to cook is the least enjoyable part of the cooking process. One of the biggest problems many millennials face is choosing what to cook online. Our app uses an easy to use, intuitive user inter interface, which goes through what recipes you see based on your, uh, on your preferences. Millennials are cooking more and using their smartphones to do so. Our application is designed for devices like smartphones and tablets, and it's also perfect for, for millennials and a market of e eager new cooks. Research by Google has shown that 59% of 25 to 30 year olds cook with either their smartphones or tablets handy. Millennials are becoming more enthusiastic to cook and preferring the culinary process as much as their finished dish. So we just want to visualize the statistics for you. So that's 31% of millennials not knowing what to cook and 59% of millennials cooking with devices. So you can see how this perfectly suits our app. So what can our app do? Easy Recipe makes it easier to make fresh, homemade food, which promotes healthy lifestyles and results in less food waste. We provide users with healthy meals and encourage them to lead uh, healthy lifestyles, and our app also features a search bar, so users can navigate to recipes that they have the ingredients for. It also features a history page, so users can see what recipes they want to come back to later, and we also have dietary preferences, including gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan, and allergy settings. Um, thank you, and now I would like to, uh, my uh, friend Arisha come on stage and present the app demonstration. Here's our um, home page. Um, we have many recipes, and at the top here we have a search bar. If you click on any one of the recipes, I'll just click on chocolate chip cookies. Um, you have a description, um, how many servings, calories, prep time, cook time, and how much time it will take in all. Um, we have um, the ingredients here, and we have steps here. We also have history, bookmark, and more. So. Now if I go back to the slides, um, we have more, so I'll give it to Rachel. Alright, so um, from here, as Pinio said before, we have a timer feature. So say the recipe tells me to boil an egg for five minutes, I can just click on the timer button and then set our time. Other features include our profile feature, so uh, I have a peanut allergy, I can just add a um, allergy right here, and then it'll show up. It'll restrict what ingredients will be in my recipe. There's also a vegetarian, dairy-free, and gluten-free. We can also set the measurement system to metric or imperial. Now it's Naya's turn. Okay, so we have a favorites page. So for example, last week, I made a really, really good blueberry smoothie. And I can save it and come back to it anytime I want to make it again. And a history page is, I know a lot of people like to accidentally close their phones when they're making it, 
So with the history page, they can just come back and look at their history and the recipe they closed will be on there. Thank you. Later, we can implement a feature where people can put in their own recipes and share with the world, and they can alter it in whatever way they choose to. Um, yeah, and you can also, once you put in ingredients, you don't have to put in every ingredient that you need for your recipe. You can just put in the, the main ingredients, and you can filter to those recipes that show up. So you might still have to go through maybe one or two recipes, but at least your, uh, your search will be much more refined. Any other questions? There is a website that we found that does this, but unfortunately, it does not offer a mobile version. So we are hoping to offer a version where we can use on our phones, so that because more people use phones, since it's more convenient. Um, and also, we, we because we knew that there was another website that used this, uh, we also added the likes feature, I mean the favorites feature, and the history page, the profile page, because we can make our app more unique. Um, uh, so the recipe screen seemed very familiar. In, it looks like it could have been designed uh, coming out of a book, for example. Did you consider how it could have changed for a mobile context? Sorry, I'm not sure. So, so it looks just like a, uh, a recipe book. Um, but because it's on a mobile app, maybe there's other things. We were going to put the ingredients on the side, but it's a little bit harder for us to close, so we couldn't do it. That's why. Thank you so much. I think you are very good. So, yeah, that's great. Our next team is uh, Teaming with Success. Come on down. And the team after that is Sharp Connect. Sharp Connect from Steveston, London is next. <laughs> Great, thank you. Let's, uh, let's pass our attention to uh, teaming with success. Thank you. 
Hello everyone, I'm Bruce, this is Bronwyn, this is Mitchell, Jack, and Kevin, and the person at the computer is Hamza, and we are teaming with success from McMath Secondary, and we're going to be presenting our product called Club Hub. So a problem that we've noticed not only at our school, but at many other schools, is that the clubs at our school have had a lack of communication and when we've tried to look up information about our clubs, there's been inefficient means of finding that information. And even when we find the information, it is outdated and it's inaccurate. So our school website does not have all of the correct information and it is not updated nearly enough. So, <laughs> so some solutions that we've come up with is that we should have something that is simple and easy to access, and we should have something that is updated regularly with the latest content and events. So that brings us to our product, Club Hub. So our process has not been super smooth. Uh, at the beginning, we've come up, we've had some design issues, and we've struggled to find the perfect interface, but Eventually, we found a good interface to settle with, and we've stuck to it for the rest of the development phase. So, some other issues? Uh, yeah, so some other major issues we faced is actually part of what inspired our team was most members on our team are very much community-involved people. We have, we're in clubs, we are in sports teams, we are everywhere. So finding time for us all to meet up and to be able to brainstorm, work together, was very difficult. Uh, it was mitigated somewhat by using uh, Bitbucket online where we could put all our code and work on that together. Uh, but another thing was that not all of us actually have maps. I think maybe two of us out of the six, five, have maps. Um, so that was another huge issue for us. So, Club Hub. We kind of know what it is already. Uh, it's Club Lexicon, the directory. We have all the clubs that Math has to offer, and the best part about this is it's pretty, it's pretty adaptable. Um, all the data can be rewritten for any other uh, community you want. You can set it up for Richmond as a whole. You can set it up for a university, another high school. So we have uh, nice little categories we put everything into. Uh, first one is education. And education is where you're gonna find everything about learning, about uh, what you would wanna need help with homework. So something like this, we've got um, multi-united nations. Uh, nice, students get together, they get to debate and talk about things going on in the UN. In our fun category, We've got more things that about students, need, when they get together, they want to have fun. So they're going to play games, they're going to play chess, they're going to play who knows what. Um, <laughs> I don't know a lot about these clubs, actually. It's a bit of a problem. Uh, community. This is all about helping out. This is service hours. This is, um, we have a lot of those, actually. Uh, student councils there, so they can help out with uh, planning events. They've done a wonderful job so far this year. Um, we've also got, um, we've also got our best part, I think, is our search tab. And our search tab has lovely scopes you can change to whatever um, thing you want. You can think, oh, I know that club, but it's, it's, I know it's a community club, but I can't remember what it's called. So I know there's like a, there's a a in it, there's a, an S, oh, there's an S in it, I know there's an S in it. So, we're gonna, so we can type in S, okay. Um, <laughs> how many more clubs do you think have S's in them? Uh, okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a community? It's, yeah, so okay, so if it's a community, and I know it's, it, it's, it's about animals, right? Is it about animals? Yeah, because I remember, because their, their initials are R-A-P-S, so, oh look! No. <laughs> well, I guess the Animal Protection Society is now a book club. Uh, certainly something. Next, um, 
but yeah, that's our, I think that's our best part. I admit it's not the prettiest of apps, but we were more focused on the content and what we could definitely offer to students in terms of finding new clubs. So I guess it's question time now. We have a struct already kind of built, and we have like the um, the Swift structure feature. That thing we have that built for clubs, and in the club uh, the struct we have club president, club info, club contacts, monster teacher. We have everything there. So, but we have. Been Yeah, that's certainly something we can um, go on to implement. Uh, that's definitely something we were thinking about, but now that people like reminded of it, definitely will be getting put in there. Yeah? Just to go back on your point about um, inputting club information, would you have some sort of interface for clubs to uh, sort of opt in and list their information there? Uh, we were planning to just contact them directly uh, by email. That's what we did uh, before, but uh, possibly for other, like, like for other schools, we would have a system that, that's built into like app that contacts uh, the like the teachers and everything. So when you're putting in the data, do you have an API that you're using, or are you just manually? Oh, uh, we were manually putting in the data, but um, to go back on to whether the clubs themselves are able to put in uh, put in cells. Um, we're not sure if that's necessarily a possibility because that would require a server to do it through the website. And the only way they could do it would be through code. And I'm not necessarily necessarily sure if we want to make clubs have that responsibility. We'd rather you know, take the brunt of that course. So what we have right now is we have a Google Sheet filled with all the uh, the club's information and you know uh, Mitchell contacted all like all the teachers through email and we have that implemented on Google. And we're just trying to get that onto the app. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I feel really good. I think I'm going to let you go. So, next team, Shark Connect, please come on down. And the team after Shark Connect will be Tesla Group Inc. Tesla Group Inc., I get ready, you're about to Then, after Tesla Group Inc., we'll take a short five minute break.
All right, uh, let's get everyone's attention.
have an easy way for clubs to have an up-to-date uh, note messages about upcoming meetings and events. Okay, now we can scroll down in the feed and find our new post that we've just created. Now, if we go to the Discover page again, hit the search, go down and go to our club page, you see the new club page we have just created. Now, it looks kind of empty, so let's customize it. If we click Home, User, Club Account Features, and Edit Club Settings, here we can import an image for an avatar and change the description. Now, if we click the Discover again, navigate back to our page, and here's our personalized club page. Now we can log out the application. Uh, the app itself stands alone. So we don't require a lot of maintenance on this because the club itself can import information and inform the students. So it's basically straightforward and requires a little maintenance, which is a uh, very good advantage. And now we've got the potential of this. Okay, uh, so we, we don't have enough time, so let's just jump to the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> server access and stuff like that. And the kind of view and the discovery things that you saw were made using collection views, which they never really taught us, we just implemented ourselves. Um, uh, okay, so actually, Shira did a... Uh, okay, Shira actually explained it before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, this app is fully functional and it's very... Um, it will be very easy to handle because again, it, clubs can put in their own input. So we decided to add this extra feature of having access to the photo gallery to really make it special so they can change their avatar and really be easily recognizable, especially in the Discover page and for the images for the posts. And um, yeah. OK. Does that answer your question? <laughs>
Thank you so much. That was good. Okay, so the next team up is Tesla Group Inc. see what happens, but it will just be our presentation. I don't think there will be a demo. Um, okay then. So, step up. So, in a world where youth is ever disengaged with each other and value, and we value likes and comments more than actual social interaction, there needs to be a solution. In fact, teenagers choose to spend on average one third of their day on social media and not with human interaction. So what if this time was actually spent meeting other people and spending time together like how we used to and actually making friends? So this is our solution to event. It basically solves the issue by getting people to come to community centers and events to meet new people and engage with their friends, but, but also finding new friends and new ways to communicate. So, Uh, so, what is it? <laughs> it's like, actually, hold on, I'll give this to Robbie. Um, so basically, Eventit helps to spread news about upcoming events in the community. So basically, instead of going on a Richmond community website, or having to search around for hours for that website, going to every community site, saying, hey, what's going on? You can literally just tap the button, 
and do the community center event. And it also enables users to follow community centers so then they're able to tell what events are ha happening. So, so why event? Um, just like other groups who did um, event applications, uh, it's for like just events and it's uh, well, it's team friendly. It's easy and simple, interactive, and we've tried to implement uh, Sierra on it. So like, if, suppose uh, you're 17 now and you're driving, and you wanna you know find out what uh, events are around you, uh, you can just ask Siri, hey, what event is around me? And then it'll uh, tell you. Um, and you can also add to calendar. Um, once you add it through the app, it'll actually add it to your phone's calendar. So that will remind you about the event. Um, so yeah, it's just an event planner in one small app. So who is it for? For teams, obviously. So the phone. Okay. So let's skip ahead. Um, okay. So the big concept of the app. Right. So the big concept of the app is to actually find a way for teams to interact with one another. And the whole goal of the app is to get us engaged and actually interact instead of being on social media. We can just go to the community centers, have fun, hang out, meet new people. I mean, it's kind of like Game of Apps. We all didn't know each other at the beginning, but we've gotten to know each other through this. So it's events like this that help build character, build community, build a sense of togetherness together. So the homepage is, uh, shows the suggested events. Um, it shows the community centers over there, and then if uh, you kind of want to just go anywhere, you can just press the randomize button, and then it'll show you more. And then up the, at the very top right, that's um, you can personalize uh, what kind of events and like how far you want to go through uh, in that. It was the that's the, um, just the uh, I really appreciated that you were making it about people going to meet in physical spaces. Uh, did you consider making it a location-based app? So what it actually has is it has an app view on one of the other screens. So if you look at that little um, right here, so that view actually tells you it would have your location and then it would have all the community centers nearby and what events are happening there. So then you could easily tell. And the thing about the community centers is that they only can add events, so you don't have to worry about any of those people like on Facebook saying, hey, come to my garage and we'll have some fun. <laughs> Thank you, let's give them a hand. I think we'll have to let them take their pictures and take their pictures. Right, so, so um, as you know, we're running behind schedule. Um, so we're gonna take a five minute break, but if you don't need to stretch, then maybe just stay in here so we can manage the traffic really quickly. So five minutes if you need to stretch. The next team after the break is teamwork from Richmond. Can I say hi? Go
Time. Uh, I try one more time. Come on. Really, really short. Really it's short. Can I? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh my God! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What? So let's, uh, let's get everyone seated. We're about to get started. Let's get everyone seated. So this next team, this next team, okay. So uh, the next team is teamwork from uh, Richmond Secondary, and the next team on deck after this is J and B Breakers from Vernet. So you can get prepared. All right. We're just waiting for a couple more judges so we can get started.
I guess uh, while we're waiting, I can explain a little bit about uh, the, the program. So the program is uh, 16 weeks long. This is the first year that we're doing uh, the Game of Apps. Uh, so it's been uh, it's been really exciting for us. Uh, we have uh, uh, 16 mentors. Uh, the mentors are uh, people who are working in the tech industry, the local tech industry. They're either professional developers or professional designers. And they're uh, volunteering their time. Uh, once a week we meet with the kids uh, every Tuesday here at Richmond Secondary uh, for three hours. Uh, so, so yeah, they, it's, been, it's been quite a long haul for the kids. They, they started off with, uh, you know, with a lot of energy and as we started getting towards the middle, they were starting to, uh, to, to kind of zone out a bit. And then the last few weeks as we're getting towards this deadline, they were all uh, frantically trying to get their apps finished. I know quite a few of them were, uh, were texting me or sending me messages. Were you in your Slack? They're sending me messages like that, even like past midnight the last few days. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, let's uh, let's get going then. So uh, team work. So hello all. We are teamwork of Richmond Secondary School. My name is Martin. And we thank you all for being here uh, and being interested in our app Spud Bug. Now, before we dive into uh, these points, please allow me to present to you a short clip that can uh, hopefully introduce you to the concept behind our app. due to uh, gardening's deep learning curve, uh, as well as the amount of effort required to maintain the health of one's plants. We found this to be a legitimate problem, and during our research to figure out how to solve this problem, we discovered that um, uh, from 2008 to 2013, two million more families actually participated in community gardening. Specifically in 2009, there was a 20% increase in new gardens. And now if we look at some geographical data, our neighbor, the United States of America, 35% of its households actually gardens. Now these numbers really reflect the demand and growth in gardening, and it really motivated our team to develop a tool uh, to help busy individuals ease into uh, the hobby of gardening. Uh, now, uh, we also wanted to create something uh, that could uh, also make the current, uh, current gardening enthusiasts uh, have a more efficient uh, way to maintain their crops. So here are uh, the pain points we found about other uh, competitors uh, to our app, like So these other apps are too simplistic, and then they're not really appealing to other people, and then some of them don't even work that well. But then uh, there are also like when you're gardening, you would want to research about like what kind of plant you're gonna plant and like the problems uh, about planting it. And then, but then when you go research, you're gonna find out you're not getting enough information uh, from those websites or like books or whatever. And then those apps also don't really address issues uh, like. You're, sometimes like, you would think like you're gonna forget watering and then like your plants just die and like there's nothing that I can help you to do about it. Okay, so our solution is different because we want to make gardening mainstream and popularize gardening and make it more appealing for you to use the app. And it'll actually help you to remind you to water your plants so they don't die. 
and then we'll, uh, our app is gonna like uh, give you notifications uh, once in a while, and then it also increases your own cultural knowledge. And if you don't know what horticultural is, is basically the study of gardening. Well, now we do demo. Okay, we'll start off with the notifications, which is an integral part of our app. Uh, as you can see, it tells you when to water the plants, and uh, basically you do these and you check them. Um, the notifications are actually ordered based on uh, urgency, so the more urgent you need to do something, the more you've been neglecting the notification, the higher up it's going to be, which is also emphasized by the red borders. Um, so where do these come from? These are actually from the plant page. Um, as you can see, these are a list of our plants. You can also search for them at the top if you have too many plants to list through. Um, so taking a closer look at these cards, Inside, there's a picture, there's the name, there's a nickname that you may have given your plant. And there's watering cycles. So these, are, as well as a small summary or description of it. Um, these are the watering schedules right here that you can see. Um, they're scrollable views. One is listed based on a 24 hour time, and one is a basic calendar view, listing the next week and when you need to water your plants. Um, underneath that, we also have relevant so we'll tell you the watering cycles, if it's an invasive species, if it's flammable as a plant. Yeah, you know, the basics. <laughs> um, we'll now take a look at how to add a plant. So that can be found at the top right corner. Plus sign. Oh. Um, you can search up a plant. So let's say basil. Click it. And uh, a lot of this info is actually editable it's for you to customize. We'll say we planted it on February the 17th. Uh, and create the plant. And as you can see, it'll actually be shown at the bottom. So yeah, that concludes our demo. Apparently, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're aiming to um, expand the gardening community, and um, it's hooked up to a database, so you don't actually have to search up all the info that anyone feels they need. It'll all be shown there.
So let's uh, let's start with GMB. So we don't have an actual app, but we have two envisioned prototypes. So yeah. So um, the biggest problem we're trying to solve is every Friday, um, we have a semester school, and a lot of other schools in Richmond are also semestered. So um, every Friday, you wake up, um, you get in your car, right? You pull up in the parking lot. Okay, um, you're kind of, you're already late, so you run through the hallway, and then you get into your class, you think it's A, B, no, it's actually B, A, you have the wrong class. So then you go back down the hallway, and then you get into your class, and your teacher's like, get out of here, I already did the attendance, you're going to go and get a late slip. So you go back into the hallway, and then you go to the office, where you spend about like three minutes, and then you go back down the hallway, into your class. So you just wasted like 10 minutes. Okay, so um, our uh, possible solutions, uh, number one, don't be late. <laughs> okay, um, number two, we came up with uh, message your friends, but a lot of the time I would ask my friend, and then he would be like, <laughs> okay. So our third solution, yeah, and, and that would be like right as class ends, okay? Um, so our third solution was our first prototype. So for the school stores, um, one of our school stores uh, named Good One, they were actually really good. Um, they made their own logo and then everything. It was uh, really well done. They were going to implement a uh, order food during class. 
but a lot of the teachers didn't like that. <laughs> so um, they didn't end up making it, but I think we can. We we tried to do a really good job of doing it. So um, this was their uh, noodle delivery system, um, where you can order food and then you can either pay them when they come or you can use like a prepaid if the app goes through. So I'm just gonna select cash and then. When the person comes to bring the food, then uh, I'll pay them in cash. And then there's also a menu that shows where uh, what's on sale today. So yeah, that's our app. Okay, hi everyone, so my name is Ryan and I'm the spokesperson for Team Odyssey. So to begin, we would like to show you guys like a small video about our team.
we want to showcase events in Richmond. So there's a lot of other websites out there or apps that do this, but we want to mainly focus on Richmond and highlight the local things that other people, um, especially visitors, don't know about. So things like the Richmond Garlic Festival or the Richmond uh, Dragon Boat Festival, not a lot of like tourists know about that, and we want to really showcase that. So we, our main focus on Richmond, and we want to really showcase what's local, and we want to bring people together through these events. So the main, so main layout of our app is basically a map where you can post all these different events and showcase these different um, places you can go in Richmond. So you can post big pictures and you can post uh, comments, descriptions, and you rate the event. So for example, if there was like a restaurant or something, you could put a picture of the food. Oh. So basically, one of our features is we want to streamline locations through photo sharing, and we want to be more accessible to reviews and sharing systems for establishments. Uh, we have intuitive map view of the users on submitted local events, and we want to allow anyone to share the part of the city they love. We're going to show the demo. That's five minutes. So questions from the, from the judges, please. So uh, let's get your attention. So this is Team Blank. Um, can I also ask, uh, please uh, hold your applause till the end so that, that it doesn't uh, break their, their, their rhythm. Maybe they just don't want to invest in something they're probably not immersed in yet. 
So our main focus is having exercises that don't necessarily require equipment. All you need is some spare time in an open space. So these are some uh, statements from our user test. And yeah, here's our demo. But sadly, he wasn't able to uh, get it to work. Apparently, he didn't actually like import. So, yeah, sorry, you don't have the demo. Oh. we were trying to implement, but the APIs were a bit messed up, so we couldn't get that in time, so we just went for the basic functions. After that is Team Transit from Richmond. Team Transit from Richmond. Yeah. So, so I really appreciate your, your patience and uh, just giving them an opportunity to showcase what they've done. So, Team Pascal. Hello. All hold, a revolutionary way to be productive. We are Team Pascal from McRoberts and this is our app. What if I told you that the most common cause of anxiety in the student population is procrastination. It is everywhere. Whether you're doing homework or studying for a test, almost every student has some form or, uh, or a part of procrastination in some degree. And it can really hinder success. That's right. We live in the era of electronic devices. No matter where we go, we are surrounded by computers and phones. The urge to interact with them is real. It's like putting a cake in front of a person who's on a diet. Sooner or later, they'll be tempted to take a bite. Luckily, we have a solution. <laughs> Our app builds self-discipline. It effectively disables your phone, eliminating that distraction. You just set a time for how long you'd like to work for, whether that be five minutes or five hours. And you can't close our app to browse social media or spend pointless hours on YouTube, because if you close our app, all the progress on it will be lost. So why on hold? because other apps that target this problem aren't as effective. They assume that the users already have self-disciplinary self skills. Had that been the case, yeah, these apps would have been unnecessary. These apps are also very uh, overly complicated with their features. Too many buttons to click, too many options to play with. In the end, users will be distracted by the apps itself all the same. We focus on simplicity because we understand students. Next slide, please. Finally is the design of our app. We chose the tur uh, turquoise color palette. Turquoise is a common color that promotes productivity and focus. We also added in many smooth transitions in the app to improve user uh, experience. Finally, we, uh, our user interface is extremely simple. 
we uh, got rid of any extraneous features and kept in only the relevant parts of our app. Okay, now time for the demo. All right, so before getting to the main feature, I'd like to showcase one of the things we mentioned, which is um, simplicity. So this, op this options page uh, really uh, represents our uh, design philosophy very well. It isn't cluttered. Um, there aren't any extra features or unnecessary features. And, but running this philosophy, this very simplistic design, uh, we risk creating a boring interface, and that's something we want to avoid. So we added features like this just to spice things up. It's very simple, it's very satisfying, and it just feels rewarding. So now that that's out of the way, let's get, let's press the start button. The user is first prompted to select a location, and this location will determine what type of reward they get at the end. And we added, we chose to add this customization, uh, to add some variety to the app, but also to make the user feel like they're more involved in the process. So let's pick Art Gallery. The second input from the user is, of course, the time. So for how long would they like to be working? Let's pick, I don't know, 10 minutes. But what if I'm not happy with 10 minutes? What if I finished early? Or what if I, I, I decide that I, I want to work on something more and I want to extend the time? Well, uh, luckily we thought of that. Down here in the menu, there's an option to change the time here. Uh, so this will change the hours, this will change the minutes. So let's change it to one minute. And there you'll see the countdown changes from 10 to one. And so what you're looking at here is the main screen, the screen that the user will be looking at, or that the screen will be on during the entire session. It's very simple. At the very top is a countdown, so we have yes for when the session will end, and below that is a simulated place in line. And overall, it's super simple. There aren't many buttons to press or to get distracted with. Really, the only button on this um, page is the menu button at the top. And we did this to encourage the, stu or the user to be more focused on the um, in, a, in a few seconds, 20 seconds, the reward screen will pop up. And the rewards system in our app is sort of a collectibles item system, where there are rare items and uh, more common ones, and the rarity is determined by the duration of the session. So longer sessions mean better rewards. And so this encourages the user to uh, have longer and more productive periods of time. Okay, so this is the reward screen. Remember that we picked Art Gallery in the very start, so we get painting as our award. And this is, <laughs> and this is added uh, to the collection of the user. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you. simulates that feeling of doing nothing, but instead of, so your phone is sort of in a um, suspended state. You, you can't really use it, so you're not distracted with all the social media and, and everything you can do. Right, so uh, the reward screen, basically we, were, we didn't have time for this uh, program, but we were gonna add share features and sort of, so they can share their rewards. And so it will be like bragging rights. Hey, look what I got, right? And it, it seems very simple, but like many games just have a very simple reward system. It isn't anything elaborate. And, we, and that, that felt like the next thing. So because students, so our demographic is students specifically, um, and anxiety is a really big problem for students, and a lot of it is caused by procrastination. And one of the major contributors to procrastination is electronic devices, and how you get sort of stuck in this black hole, clicking one link that leads to another one, and then you've lost two hours, and then you're stressed because you have a test more. So this will hopefully like, disable this problem. So the next 
team is Team Transit. Uh, team Transit. And then after Team Transit, we'll take another short break. Let's make it as short as we can so that um, we can uh, stay on time. tomorrow, which means we want to build an app that is not only benefit for our current lives, but also for the future. Um, this is a famous Chinese sentence. Uh, this means I am leading for the wider world. So we want, uh, the purpose of our app is to help those people who want to explore the world more. Um, the problem uh, there are a number of citizens in the world who travel abroad regularly have soared dramatically. Uh, however, wayfinding becomes a major problem among all tourists. Uh, this bar chart over there demonstrates the growth of the number of tourists from 2001 to 2016 on a five-year interval. So we have some pain points for the wayfinding apps currently. So all wayfinding apps should be used in Wi-Fi environment, and they're not quite sufficient in guiding. And some people they still have problems like when they when they are finding their way. And the detailed information about their destination and their route is not provided. And um, this is not quite user friendly. And the app yeah, most apps are only in other languages. So the solution is does Open Transit. So uh, we added a new function, it's the vocal reminder, and um, this I will explain in detail once we go over to a demo. And we have a satellite trace location, it's basically a blue dot, and on your device that, you're, that you can see and tell like, where you are exactly. And we have a night mode available, so like when you are in the, using our app in a dark environment, you don't need to look at the bright screen. Um, so like you just need to look at, like because the screen will turn dark, so it's like not so bright for your eyes. And um, for our app is available in 150 languages, which is pretty amazing. And we have used some user tutorials. These are the videos that can tell you what to do when using our app. And on six, your favorite, it's free. And um, the Wi-Fi is not required for our app. Next slide, please. All right, the demo. So this is the welcome screen that when you first open our app. So you type in your username and the, your password, and then you click login. So it will load in. And then speak, so we mentioned that you are like going to like place, and this for this one I chose Vancouver Chinatown. So you type in Vancouver Chinatown in the blank, and then you click for results, and then it shows out like the two two options that you can go. One is by bus 401, and the other one is by SkyTrain. 
And you can see, I will tell you the schedule like for SkyTrain and also when the next bus 401 is going to arrive. And then here is this your destination, and this is your current location. Next. All right, and here you can see we have a caution sign. So it's like, so we want to, to plan your route more efficiently. So we tell you that there, there is a card of accident on, in the route and um, you should adjust your timetable uh, accordingly. And then you click next. Now you can start your route. So this is basically the screen that you're going to see when you are um, commuting. And um, you can see, because in real life, your, this icon, the, your location is going to move as you go. And um, when you are arriving at your destination, before you arrive, we're going to, the app is going to tell you, hey, um, you're, you're arriving at your destination in two minutes, and um, so that you will be prepared um, not to um, go past the station. And you arrive. And then when you click home, you will go back to the first screen that we saw. So this is the wireframe we did at the beginning of the game of apps, and this is basically the plan. And um, this is the um, the app that we developed. However, um, our one of our team members um, he quit like two days ago, and um, the app has crashed. So we can no longer demonstrate the app. However, we we showed you um, the the prototype. Thank you. So, uh, because your phone, like in big cities, like you have your phone, right? And um, you have the, um, because you have a signal, because you need to call, and they receive calls and call other people. So you use that signal and to connect it to base stations in big cities. And like, because in big cities, like there are many base base stations. So like, like real time information about transit. Or are you using a data connection then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry? Sorry. Okay, um, we have two target groups. So first is for the um, for tourists to to uh, make their um, transportation easier when they are in a unknown like in a strange city. And second, like we have a function I I forgot to mention is like for just for um, like white collar workers. So when they are like going to job, or going to work and go home, like or like to frequent places that they are going frequently, so like they, they can save like those destinations in our app. So like they don't need to like type in like. Where like where they're going, and um, I think this this one is also pre pretty useful. All right. So uh, now we are um, we're going to take a short break. Let's make it as short as possible. Um, we have six more teams to go after the break. So, but the teams have worked really hard. So, so give them an opportunity to showcase their work. All right. Uh, so I apologize for the uh, for the delay, but we are running behind schedule. So a short break, and then after that, the team after the break is Keep Track from Richmond High School. Six, one, you bringing up banana for everybody? Of course you know.
about to, um, to present is Keep Track from Richmond High School. Uh, the next team on deck will be Cypher from the band. Yeah. All right. So hi everybody, uh, we are team Keep Track from Richmond High. Uh, hello guys, uh, my name is William. 
my name is Raymond. My name is Tanvi, and this is Dusty. <laughs> All right, so our problem actually is a very uh, local problem, and it resonates with uh, many of my friends personally, and I believe uh, Joy and Raymond's friends, as we are all part of the IB, the International Baccalaureate Program at R uh, RHS. Um, uh, the problem that we found is uh, it's hard uh, keeping track of the variety of different extracurricular hours and community service hours that we need for uh, the completion of the IB program. So as IB students, we are required to uh, log all of our extracurricular and volunteering hours. However, uh, we input all our hours by hand, and the current method to verify the hours is cumbersome uh, and unreliable. Uh, this is true for many of the services designed to log in certain hours as they cannot be easily verifiable. So, the inspiration for this app actually started when one of my friends in green team, he was supposed to show up for an event, but he showed up late. So then, um, the organizer didn't know him because it was his first time showing up at an event, and then, so then he didn't like record his service hours, even though he was there. So, yeah. If there's too many people for um, an organizer to keep track of, it's easy for the organizer to lose track and then not record your service hours. So our solution to this problem is keep track. And it's a simple, easy, and beautiful way to keep track of your service or other extracurricular hours. And we tried to make it as simple and as beautiful as possible, since we found that many other products had too many features and too many clutter, uh, too much clutter, and it was really hard to just focus on one thing, which is just keeping track of our hours and exporting them to different services. So um, th these are a few quotes that we found on our user testing, which is the the, um, the surveys we've done, and she was part of our user testing, so why don't you say your quote? Okay. Um, so, as an organizer, I find it extremely useful to keep track of all the temporary workers that are there. Um, and so, it's really easy to, like, I don't have to keep track of start times and end times. I just set the timer and it counts for me. So, our app is based off of a, a stopwatch mechanism where when you start an event, you press start, and then if the stopwatch will run, and then when you end an event, the um, stopwatch just stops, and then you can will have your hours automatically lo logged inside the app. So next comes our unique selling point. So unique features. What sets us apart? Uh, there are many apps uh, throughout the mobile market, both on App Store and Google Play uh, who keep track of time. However, there are a few features that sets us apart from them. Uh, our export functions. We are able to uh, export our hours into the Manage Back portal, which is uh, used by the school's IB students. Uh, we can also export it to a variety of different, uh, diff different job boxes. Uh, we can export it to Microsoft Dropbox, Google Sheets, and use it in widely used the comma separated values format. Uh, it's easy to use and really beautiful to look at. It's aesthetically pleasing, uh, which allows for a beautiful and effortless experience with our app.
if you want to see a time, see here. And then you go back. So if you want to actually add something in the middle of an event, like you, another person attending, you can go down here and then add an attendee. And then here, you can see the stats of each person. So every new event has a different color. So you see Angela and Juan actually did the same event, and that's, that's different from everyone else doing the event, another event. Yeah, and here you can export it to whatever. And then if, uh, this is completely up to the organizer to decide, so then if the, um, if you, um, if you were there and then the organizer didn't see, you can press over here, so you can tell the organizer and the organizer could add it out to your, um, thing. Okay. <laughs> and we find out a lot of, um, it's, uh, a lot of, Organizer apps are actually also attendees and events. So then we made this app for the average student to use, not only as an organizer, they can also use it for themselves. So this is their um, their progress bar, and then you can also export it into these formats. Our apps clean 
Okay, so now we will go over our brief demo. So when you first open the app, you are greeted with three different options of how to look for a new volunteer opportunity. So first of all, there's the new button, which shows the newest events that are available. If you go back, we have our categories where we sort the events by category. So for example, if you go to community, you will find all of the community-related events. And finally, you can, of course, show all of the events. Once you find an event that you're, capable, uh, that you're happy with, you can click on the event to get more information. You can choose to bookmark or unbookmark an event. You'll be given the date, amount of volunteers that are needed, the location, and a brief description. You can press the website button to visit our website for some more information. Uh, just go back to think we'll load. <laughs> Uh, you can email them, it says send them an email, which Chrome does not work because the simulator does not allow it. And same with the call function, it's ready, but it does not work on the simulator. On the bottom left-hand corner, we have our track hours page. Here you can track, keep track of the hours you have completed. So say for example, you need 13 hours to pass grade nine. You would enter that in there. And say after your first volunteer, opportunity, uh, volunteer event you attended to, you volunteer for three hours. You can enter that there, and then uh, our nifty math function will tell you how many hours you have left. <laughs> very, very useful for those who are not so worth it, please. Yeah. <laughs> and at the bottom left, uh, right hand corner, we have our bookmarks. And this is where all the events you have bookmarked will appear. And again, if you click on an event, it will take you to the right information page. And that's for now. So to conclude, our app also allows room for future expansion, such as plans to include more municipalities, these while continually adding new events. Thus, inspire individual as well as communal growth with SPFs. Thank you.
So the issue, the problem that we are trying to solve in our app is that students often lack the necessary experience, knowledge, and support for finding their careers. We decided to base our app off of this because we as high school students know that we're going to run into this problem soon. When we asked a group of students what their goal for the future was, 50% of them said that it was to have a good career. Unfortunately, very few of these students know how to achieve that goal. Pain points. The process of finding a career can be confusing and compli complicated. And since many students often lack necessary support, many students experience stress and worry during this and face many troubles. Our app helps students um, explore potential career paths during times in which they may be unsure of where or who to turn to. It also has a chat function, which allows students to talk to one another and um, encourages bonds and connections to be built. With our app, students are able to easily and quickly obtain the necessary information that they need. And with that, we'll get into the demo. Okay, so first up, we're going to show you our design. So first, you can sign in after you type in your username and password. So here, you're greeted with our home screen with four main um, functions. Our first is careers. When you click on careers, you can sort the list by um, alphabetically or by popularity. Say you want to become a teacher, so you click on teacher. Um, here you can watch a short video that introduces the career, and there's a little bit of info about the career. And another feature that we want to emphasize is group chats. This, these group chats connect you with people near you that have the same interests and goals. If you want to come back to this page, you can click bookmark. Another main function of our app is contacts. So in contact, not only can you talk to um, other students and professionals in the field, you can also be involved in group chats with people with similar interests and um, ideas that they can share with you. And you can talk to them. So, if we wanted to go back to the teacher's page, we would click bookmarks and here would be the teacher's page. And if we were done with it, we would unclick it and go back to the home page. And the last function we'd like to share with you is your profile. So, based on the information you input when you sign in, uh, a biography will be created for you with some of your interests and education that you can later edit. And with that, we'd like to show you our Xcode demo. So, like the Envision, we have a sign-in page. And here's our home page. Uh, so here is our careers and teacher, your video, um, the information that you would need, and the bookmarks. Oh. <laughs> um, another thing we're able to code is our contact page, which has a list of everyone <laughs> that you've added and you can talk to. And the other thing we were able to add is a logout button, which brings you back to the login page. And that concludes our demo. Any questions? which would be to connect you with professionals in the field so you can ask them questions. But you'd also be able to connect with people who have similar interests. Yeah. So uh, 
as you probably know, there's new careers popping up all the time. How does your system anticipate those new careers? So we were thinking that certain verified professional users could add suggestions of their own that we would screen. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Marco. My name is Harvey. Uh, today, we are proud to present to you our app day to day, an app that keeps you informed about school activities uh, every day. Before we discuss our app, we'd like to share you a personal story that you may relate to as well. Many people, and hopefully everyone here, uh, can agree that high school is a major point in a person's life. It is during this time that you build long lasting friendships explore different aspects of life, and build your identity. Currently, as a grade 12, my journey through high school is closing. As I reflect upon my high school experiences, uh, I come to realize that I've missed out on a lot of opportunities in the past. I come to regret the clubs that I did not join, the events that I did not participate in, and the friendships that I was unable to make. I would. <laughs> I wanted to be involved with the student council and had a passion for drama. But oftentimes, due to my timid nature, I would unknowingly miss out on important dates and meetings. As a result, I believe my high school experience was greatly diminished, and not as memorable as it could have been, and revolved around uh, academic aspects of school. My personal experience is common with other fellow students, which inspired a team to come up with a solution. What is the main problem? Many students are not aware of the uh, activities that are around their school community. This is mainly due to the issue of uh, being unaware of the... Um, oftentimes throughout our high school career, events have been disorganized in terms of student awareness. The current system, or the lack thereof, for event reminders, forces students to post on Facebook announcements and word of mouth. Essentially, there's a lack of a centralized help for students to join clubs and events. How do we solve this problem? To solve this issue, we create day to day, an app that centralizes the activities, notices, dates, and clubs all into an easy and simple to use platform. Our design focus was keeping a simple layout with concise and relevant information. The timeline is custom made for the user. Follow clubs, sports teams, or competitions that are important to you. Main events such as grad events if you're a grade 12, assemblies, holidays, and other important dates will be available for everyone to see and can be continually updated by an administrator. With these features, connecting with people that share similar interests with you is easy. Meeting with people you don't usually talk to, and this ultimately brings the school more together and connects it as a whole. What makes day-to-day -day different? With Facebook, there are multiple pages to keep track of, while some students don't even bother to search through the rest of the posts. This mess is created by posts constantly being bumped down by more recent ones. Announcements are ignored as classes often talk over them and don't pay attention to them at all. Word of mouth is both unreliable and inconsistent as it is all dependent on the people you talk to. With the problem in mind, we surveyed around our school and the common consensus is agreement. The younger grades, grade eight, nine, and 10, the future of our school, all agreed 
that they struggle with keeping track of school events. Aside from the obvious fact that we follow on the club, uh, focus on the club searching and following aspect, we do see that we draw many similarities with pre-existing calendar apps. As such, we tend to add major improvements and features. One of which being that administrators will be able to continually update a school-wide calendar that could include important dates such as holidays for every student that uses day to day. This integration will eliminate the agendas we buy as the school calendar handouts we are given at the start of the year. By doing away with these paper dead weights, we're not only becoming more eco-friendly, but we're also redu reducing costs for the school. How do we implement it into schools? Day-to-day -day was envisioned to be a seamless transi transition from traditional ways of school organization and announcements. We don't want to have it be something that you'll never touch, such as your school planner book. We want to make it seamless by having the login be the same as your district-wide login for the Apple computers, making the sign-up process easy as pie. Now we're going to go to Michael with the demo. So uh, here you can see our, uh, our landing page. This is where you can sign in or create an account. So we're going to create an account with this thing. This is the timeline view here, and basically you can scroll through and see all of the events here. Oh. Um, and basically, uh, if you needed to, you could probably uh, see a description of an event here, and you can close that as well. So this is the calendar over here, and this is our club page. So for instance, if we want to scroll down, maybe we want to join the engineering club. We join that, and we have a join button. If you change your mind, you can simply just ban from that and leave. Afterwards, you can just simply go to your profile and log out. Questions? Adrian, can I get the next set of batteries? All right. Well, great, thank you so much. So please, please have a good day. So next thing up is uh, Pistol from Roberts, uh, and uh, on deck is uh, the enactors from the United States. Hello, uh, my name is Kevin Chen. I'm Raphael. And that's Alan. Okay, uh, hello, we are Pascal, and we are Roberts. Yeah. 
Video games and online testing has proven to be more difficult. Children may have a hard time focusing or may struggle with common words because of this exposure to technological electronics. With their app, your child can learn and develop early skills with a fun and enjoyable concept that will be put on their map. Why is better? So many children of the modern era enjoy using their electronic devices more than the traditional worksheets. Combined with the concept of a video game, you can learn a variety of math equations in a fun and resourceful way. All of the child's learning process is now contained in a single, easy, and resourceful way. Uh, in a single and easy access screen that becomes less of a hassle and more of a benefit. It's also better than worksheets because games are what children mainly download on the app. We evolved the traditional, uh, we, we evolved the traditional worksheet learning formula and transferred it into a more modern digital store for anyone to access and download. From my own experience, when I bought my first iPad, I searched for hours and hours without end for games on the app store, downloading whatever that seemed to me. My mother also wanted me to download an educational app. I found it difficult to find anything of a good quality and something that would catch my eye. We decided to fill in this gap and create something that children can enjoy and then. So the concept of our app is to finish the obstacle course by adding one of the objects to the toolbox in the operating part. After that, you need to select the object and place it into the gap with the math, different mathematical equation for the gap, as well as the object. Then you want to roll the uh, ball into the flag and then
the final team, the final team presenting. So thank you so much for your, for your patience. You know, like I said earlier, the kids work really hard for this, so this is a good, good opportunity for them to really show, you know, what they've done, right? Um, Hello everyone, my name is Daniel, this is Lynn, Tony, Ite, and Maggie, and together we form the Enactors, and we bring to you an application proposal for Homework Pledge. So this is an outline of what I'll be going through. Um, so I'm sure all of you, or many of you, have been through high school, and some of you still are in it, and we all know the struggle of homework. Um, procrastination led us down a path of like bad grades and unfinished assignments, so we bring a solution to you, um, Homework Pledge. When you're lost and you don't have anyone to ask for help or you, your teachers are too busy, um, you're, this all leads to stress. So the solution is Homework Pledge, which is a homework help app. It's peer-to-peer -peer and it's district-based. You can post any question and it will get answered. Also, we have moderators to filter any inappropriate content. Um, some of our competitors are Yahoo Answers and Quora, and I'll be going over the competitive advantage. So first off, our answers are very specific because our app is district-based, which means that everyone knows what question you're talking about, the exact worksheet and everything. So it's also peer-to-peer, -peer, so the language is easily um, understood by other students because students have posted the answers. Um, as I mentioned, it's district-based, so everyone knows what teachers and assignments you're talking about. The answers are instant, so unlike Yahoo Answers or Quora, where you might have to wait a day or two to get an answer as there's so many questions, our app brings it to you within hours. And last, it's a trusted source because moderators um, filter any content that is not appropriate. So this is a quick bar story. Um, none of us here have any prior experience with app design or coding or anything like that. Um, but we just wanted to help others because we see the struggle every day of finishing your homework on time. So I'll be going through a quick demo. Um, since we didn't code enough to actually have a demo set up, we'll be putting it in our slides. So this is what the screen would look like when you post a question. You would type in a question, and then, next slide please. Um, you would select categories, so it's easier for people who answer questions to find your question and answer it. Um, so after you type the question, let's say you type who is Woodrow Wilson, um, it will be filtered on the hot question page by views, likes, and how recently it went up. So the most urgent questions are answered first. So here we have the answers to the questions. So it says he's the president of America and he's the guy in World War I. And with our um, inferring skills, we, can, we realized that he was the president of America during World War I. So that's basically it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. So um, who the moderators will initially be us, so whoever um, we who designed the app. And as we go on, we will find credible sources such as students and teachers to moderate the app to make sure no inappropriate content is put on the app. Yeah. So the answers come very quickly because there's much less content, so all the questions there, there's not as much questions to answer, so people who are answering the questions will find them faster and answer them faster. So how will we build up people initially is um, I've spoken to my teachers such as my business teacher, my science teacher, and um, my tech teacher, and they've all agreed that this app would be very helpful. So they are willing to advertise it to their students, so we'll gain our initial user base this way by teachers advertising this app as a helpful homework 
pumping app, and then after that, you, when you get our initial user base, um, we we'll kind of build from there. Yeah. Did you consider that all the students could also answer those questions? So that is the main purpose of the app: students answering questions for other students. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, let's let's give all the teams a big round of applause. We're going to be setting up the stage uh, in, a, in a few minutes' time. Uh, we'll take a five-minute break, and then we'll come right back here, and we'll start with the uh, with awards uh, presentations. So, five-minute break, and then we'll, we'll start the awards presentations.